Welcome back. Today I'm taking a look at the Wubin X2. Let's check it out. Now I should explain, a few months back I did a short on the aluminum version of the Wubin X2 Owl right here. But Wubin just released the X2 in more colors in titanium and copper. The version that I have right here is the green circuit board in titanium. Now I went with the green circuit board because honestly I don't have anything else quite like this in my collection. Just check this out, it is stunning. This green titanium really pops on this X2 right here. If I hold up the black one side by side, you can see what I'm talking about. So once I got my hands on this green titanium version right here, I decided to do a full review on the X2. So the X2 has four lighting modes, three of those are cyclable, and two special modes, SOS and strobe. It has 2,500 maximum lumens and a max beam distance of 146 meters. But you also have your choice of two different emitters. The Osram P9, which I have right here in the black aluminum X2, and in this titanium I have the Samsung LH351D emitters. The Osram P9s are more of a cool white color temperature, and the Samsung LH351Ds are more of a neutral white LED. And because I have the Samsung emitters in this X2, the output changes a little bit. There's a lumen output of 1800 instead of 2500, and now it has a throw of 128 meters instead of 146. But now I get that nice neutral white beam as you see right there, instead of the cool white beam that you see in my original X2. It has two built-in 2000 milliamp hour 14500 lithium ion batteries, and it's charged via the USB Type-C charging port under this little pedal flap right here on the outside. And it takes about three hours to fully charge. Now right under that USB Type-C charging port is a battery life indicator. You can see right there it is glowing solid blue. It's a four level boot up battery life indicator. It also glows red when charging and solid blue when it's fully charged. And let's talk about this pedal switch right here that hides the USB Type-C charging port. It's completely made of metal and it's magnetized so when it's down, if I turn it upside down, you can see it doesn't just open. And it does nothing to hurt the waterproof writing because this is still IP68. Six means it's completely dustproof and eight means it's submersible in up to six feet of water. It also has an impact resistance of one meter. And let's briefly talk about this untraditional design right here, this flat body design on the X2. I've mentioned to death how much I love the new flat body designs that some of these new flashlights are coming out with. Even when I reviewed the Wubin X1 Falcon right here. You can see this is basically just the bigger brother to the X2. If you guys missed this review, I'll put that down below in my description box. But one of the main reasons I like this flat body shape just because it feels very natural to hold it in your hands like this. And on top of that, it's very pocketable. When this is in your pocket, it just fits so nicely because of this wide flat body here. Now let me show you everything that came with my Wubin X2 right here. And first off, it did come with this little silicone rubber cap here to protect those three LEDs, which you can see right there. It does come with the lanyard, but this might be one of the coolest lanyards I've ever seen because this is actually a charging lanyard. You can see when you take off this little plastic cap right there that attaches right to the flashlight, you can see the USB Type-C charging port and the USB charging port right there. So if you're wearing this flashlight around your neck with the lanyard, you'll always have your charging cable with you. I think this is fantastic. And this lanyard attaches right here to the attachment point right there near the tail of the flashlight. And it comes with your standard user manual right there. All very cool stuff. And oh, it does come with a five-year warranty. So now let's talk about the dimensions. It comes in at 3.35 inches by 1.54 inches and has a thickness of 0.79 inches. And according to my weight test, it comes in at 4.06 ounces, so 115 grams. So I'm gonna pop on the screen right now a graph of the lumens and runtime. So you can see it's broken down with the two emitters, the Osram P9 and the Samsung LH351D. If you go with the cooler white Osram P9, on low it's five lumens, medium is 100, high is 400, and turbo is 2500 with a step down to 800 lumens. And of course that Osram P9 is where you'll get that maximum 2500 lumens in the maximum throwing distance of 146 meters and the max intensity of 5300 candela. 
Now let's talk about the Samsung LH351D is what I have right here in this titanium version. Low, medium, and high are all the same. Five lumens, 100, and 400 lumens, but maximum turbo is 1,800 instead of 2,500. It's gonna lose a little bit of throw at 128 meters and a little bit of intensity at 4,100 candela. But when I go outside to do the beam test, I'm gonna show you side by side the Osram and the Samsung LEDs, just so you get a better idea of what they both can do in the color temperatures when I'm actually outside. And just so you know, those modes are programmable, at least low, medium, and high are. I have the user manual right here, and it says you can program low from five lumens to 100, medium you can program from 100 to 400 lumens, and high you can program from 400 to 800. So that is awesome because I did have an issue with the mode spacing right here, at least from high to turbo. I feel like a jump from 400 to 25, or even 400 to 800 was too much. But if you program high to 800, 800 and then it goes to 1800, that mode spacing is much, much better. So I like the fact that you can program these modes right here. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm just gonna leave it stock for now. I just wanted to let you guys know that while I'm talking about the lumens and runtime here. Now let's look at strobe and SOS. Strobe is a thousand lumens with either of the emitters and SOS is 200 lumens with either of the emitters. Now for strobe and SOS, I would like to see those lumens bumped up a little bit. Strobe at 1000 lumens, it's still bright. I would still like to see the maximum lumens with that strobe on either one of those emitters. SOS at 200, once again, I'm gonna say it, if you're using this flashlight on SOS, it means you are in an emergency situation, which means I want a brighter SOS. I know what they're going for, Lower lumens means a longer runtime on that SOS, but if nobody can see the SOS, what's the point? So I know I just talked about programming the low, medium, and high right here. I wish they would let us program strobe and SOS as well. Or if I wanna program an 1800 lumen SOS, I should be able to do that. Now let's take a look at these runtimes here. On low, you have a runtime of 80 hours. That's our maximum runtime in this flashlight. Medium is 10 hours, high is two and a half hours. And now let's take a look at turbo. So turbo has a runtime of one minute and then it steps down to one hour, regardless of which emitter we're talking about. So I'll be testing out that one minute turbo claim a little bit later on in this video. All right, so let's talk about the UI here. There's only one single button right here on the top. One short press turns it on and a short press turns it off. And there's only constant mode in this flashlight. There is no momentary on if I half press or anything like that. It's just short press on, short press off. And once it's on, if I press and hold long press, it cycles through those three modes, low, medium, and high. From on or off, if I double press, there's our maximum lumen output right there on turbo. From off, if I long press and hold right there, it goes instantly to low. So that's nice, it has an instant access to low and turbo. If I triple click, it'll take me to strobe and triple click again, that takes me right to SOS. And yes, it does have a mode memory, so if I put it on medium, turn it off, turn it back on, it goes right back to medium. And it does have a button press lockout, just hit that switch four times. It'll flash a few times like that, and now we are locked out. And it does have a lockout indicator. You can see that status light indicator right there flash when I try to turn it on, no go. The only way to turn it back on is to click four times again, and we are back. So like most Wubin flashlights, it has a very simplified UI, which I absolutely love for my EDC flashlights. All right, so now it's time for the heat test. I let the flashlight run for two minutes total, and I took the temperature at the head and the body after one minute, and then after two minutes. And after one minute at the body was only 61 degrees Fahrenheit. At the head was only 80.3 degrees Fahrenheit. That is incredible, actually. For a flashlight this size, it has great heat dissipation if it's only 80 degrees at the head after one minute of maximum turbo. And you can see there's a hot spot right on the side of the flashlight. That read about 90 degrees after one minute. I believe those are heat dissipating fins that are on the outside of the flashlight. But regardless, you're not gonna be touching that point anyways. Even at 90 degrees, if you did touch it, it's perfectly fine. And then after two minutes, the head rose to about 85.3 degrees and the body rose to about 67.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall, if you run this flashlight on turbo for two minutes, it's completely manageable. No gloves or anything. In fact, it was shockingly cool at the body. I couldn't believe it. With flashlights of this size and running 1800 lumens, I'm used to much, much hotter temperatures. So now it's time for my turbo test. I let the flashlight run for two minutes. And after a minute, I definitely saw a step down. When I'm editing the footage later on, I'll put on the screen when the flashlight started to step down and when it ended the step down. 
But now it's time to take this flashlight outside and show you guys some beam shots. All right, so I'm gonna start with the titanium with the Samsung LEDs first. And there's low. There's medium, all right, that's a little bit better. Obviously starting at five lumens. And this is 100. I'm keeping them at the default levels. I'm not gonna pre-program them or anything for this video. There's high at 400 lumens. I'll put up a distance from me in that tree right there, that big tree right dead center of the screen. Let's pan across. Now, after this video, I'm probably going to program this high maybe to 600. I would like it maybe in between, you know, the four and 800. And now let's go to turbo, double click, and there we go, 1800 lumens here. See that nice, cool white, sorry, neutral white emitter here. Very floody beam, obviously, with the shape of those three emitters right there, that long, shape of the head we're gonna have a nice wide beam profile here it's like there's an animal right there what is that maybe a raccoon that's weird but there's the samsung emitter now let's go to the let me turn it low this is the cool white osram p9 is low there's medium Little windy out here today guys sorry about that there's high wow and then turbo so obviously we're going to get a little bit more output from this osram p9 emitter right here if you guys want to go for maximum and don't mind that cool white in your everyday carry flashlight go with this version right here you guys see that down there i'm gonna try to zoom in See what the heck that is right there. I can't tell. Small little critter. But let's go back to the titanium. Go right back to turbo. You guys see the difference there. Somewhat of a hot spot there. Very even beam profile here, as you guys can see. Very nice beam out of this X2, I must say. But Let's go to another part of my lawn and I'll give you guys some more beam shots.
So there you go, you guys saw the beam test, exactly what I was expecting, a very wide, floody beam out of this everyday carry flashlight. I love the color temperature that comes out of these LH351Ds by Samsung, but I still like these Osram P9 emitters. If you guys want the maximum lumen output, don't mind the cool white in your everyday carry flashlight, go here. But you know, for me, I tend to lean more towards a neutral white with my EDC flashlights. 1800 lumens is plenty on turbo for me for an EDC flashlight. 400 lumens for the high, I might program that to 600, like I said outside. Just to get a little more kick out of that high, 90% of the time I'll be using that high anyways. That five lumen low is fine. I sort of wish there was a one lumen moonlight mode, but five lumens, completely fine. And you guys know my thoughts on that 1000 lumen strobe and 200 lumen SOS. I wish those were programmable, by the way. But I said this in my last Wubin video, Wubin has been absolutely knocking it out of the park with their flashlights lately. And this X2 and type titanium just proves my point. I love the new unconventional design of these flat shaped flashlights. They fit nicely in your pocket. And with this flat tail right here, you can tail stand it. I forgot to mention that in the video, but you guys know I love tail standing my flashlights. And it passed the heat test with flying colors. So even though if you have this on turbo for any amount of time over two minutes, you're not gonna burn your hands off like some flashlights I've reviewed in the past. So in my opinion, the Wubin X2 is an absolute winner and one of my favorite everyday carry flashlights right now. Whether you go with the cool white Osram emitter or the neutral white Samsung emitter, the aluminum model or the titanium model. And I should mention the prices right now on their website, they have the aluminum model for 98 bucks. And at the time I'm recording this video, the titanium models are available for pre-order. You can get it right now for 30% off, but the price is still $308 even at 30% off. The regular MSRP is 385 for the titanium. So if you guys wanna go premium, if you guys want a premium flashlight with premium materials, go with this titanium version. If you want the exact same performance and don't wanna put a second mortgage out on your house, go with the aluminum version. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you think of the Wubin X2 in titanium? I'll put all the information down below in my description box if you wanna check these out for yourself. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe. And go!